Hello, I'm Andrew Wooldridge. For 20 years, I've been working for government agencies, helping people in New South Wales understand their soils. This video is going to explain the differences between salinity and sodicity. People get them confused because both involve sodium, but they have different processes. There's a lot of sodium in the landscape. And the main difference between salinity and sodicity is that when the sodium is free to move through the soil and the water, we call that salinity. And when it is bound to clay particles and concentrated in certain parts of the landscape, we call that sodicity. I'm going to talk about salinity first. Salt is a natural feature of the Australian landscape. Salt is present in many soils and in many geologies. Salinity is caused when we change the water balance and move that salt around in the landscape. We change the water balance by changing the land use. This usually involves replacing perennial based vegetation systems with annual systems. We might replace a perennial pasture system with an annual crop. We might clear native woody vegetation. Symptoms of salinity include areas where the water table is high, wet ground, bare patches where nothing wants to grow, dead trees, dying vegetation, and maybe a salt crust on top of the ground. We're standing on an area that's being affected by salinity and it's showing very common symptoms that we see on saline areas. We're seeing that crops are struggling to survive. We're also seeing that the pasture vegetation changes around a saline area. In this case, the native red grass, the Bothria chloa, is stopping. It's not growing on the saline area. It's a plant that doesn't like the saline conditions. So that change in the type of pastures and the pattern of that in the landscape is telling us that salt's occurring. We're also seeing that that soil's becoming more susceptible to erosion because of the chemical changes in the soil, which means that an area that was able to cope with certain volumes and velocities of water now is eroding quite easily. We're also seeing some saline indicator species like cooch grass, which will occur through a season on a saline area and help you recognise where it is. Looks like we've got some kangaroo tracks here, Brian. Yeah, you can see his tail there. Yeah. Animals will come to saline areas and lick the salt off the top of the ground. In this case, it's kangaroos, but it can also be domestic animals like sheep and cattle. The process of salinity is similar everywhere. How that process manifests itself will be different at a farm scale. That will depend on the hydrology of the farm, the soils, the geology, and the climate. On this farm, salt is pretty free to move around through the soils. The salt is being concentrated at the low areas of the farm and is affecting the vegetation and the water quality. We're seeing that the water is very clear in the creeks in this area and we're also seeing that the vegetation is being affected. The salt's stopping the vegetation growing and making it hard for that vegetation to access the fresh water available in the soil. At this site, the shape of the landscape is a very important feature. The landscape is concentrating the salt at the low points, which are being blocked by the shape of the catchment being a valley constriction. Salinity is a symptom of a change in the water balance. Next, we'll talk about sodicity, which is a different process. I've been working on soils in the central west of New South Wales on soil erosion and soil management for 30 years. As you heard earlier, soil salinity affects vegetation and water quality. However, soil sodicity affects soil behaviour. Here we have a soil which has a high sodium level. This makes the soil unstable when it's wet, which causes the soil structure to break down and the soil to disperse. Sodicity causes landscape issues such as erosion, as you can see here, surface sealing and restricted water movement. We've talked before how sodic soils are unstable when they're wet. Here are some examples. The first one shows how the soil has flowed away from the roots and left the roots behind and undercut this soil. The second one shows how the soil on this face has flowed because it's unstable and formed a wormy appearance. The last one, you can see the great big lump of soil which has fallen down from up there because it's been undercut by the instability of the sodic soil. These diagrams show how sodicity impacts on soils. There is some complex chemistry involved here, but the important thing is that when soils are wet, the sodium ions attract water molecules, which push the clay sheets apart, causing dispersion. We can see how these soils collapse and disperse with time-lapse in the laboratory. 
The dispersed clays clog the pores of the soil, making it very hard and dense, especially when it is dry. There's not enough space for water, air and roots. A very difficult environment for the plants to grow in. One of the consequences of sodic clays being unstable to wetting is that when there's water moving through the sodic subsoils, they will move the dispersed clay through the soil and form tunnels. There's an example of one of the tunnels behind us here. The problem with these tunnels is that they will keep the gully active while ever there is water moving through the subsoil. In the tablelands where we are today, sodicity is usually a problem in the subsoil. And sodic subsoils mainly occur in the lower slopes and in the valley bottoms. The main problem you get with sodic subsoils is gully erosion, as you can see here. And the other problem that you get is failed dams. On the inland plains, such as in the lower Macquarie, sodicity affects the surface soils. This makes it difficult to grow the pastures and crops. Typical problems include surface ponding, surface sealing and poor germination. Understanding the difference between sodicity and salinity is vital in managing the areas affected by these problems. Just remember, salinity is about free salt, which affects vegetation and water quality. Sodicity is about sodium bound to the clays, which causes dispersion and erosion.